Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. It's now time for Today in History. Uh, let's tell you some interesting events that occurred on this day many years ago. And we're going back to the year 2014. And it's on this day, June 14th, June 15th, 2014. Now, today in history, um, we saw some Boko Haram insurgents attack a market in Bornu State. And they killed at least 15 people. And that's including traders. So they had stormed a local market in the Daku village of Askira Uba local government area of Bornu State. They went uh, you know, to the market on motorcycles. There were about 20 armed men. They invaded the market in the morning. They set fire to the market, burned down lots of stores, cut away foodstuffs, and they just ran away. This, this was you know, in 2014, and at this time, we had been seeing lots of terrorist attacks. You know, the week before, there were about six attacks you know, in Bornu State and in northern Nigeria. Boko Haram insurgents were bombing cities, bombing towns, invading villages, you know, attacking markets and selling foodstuff. So on this day in history, uh, such an event occurred in Bornu State, northern Nigeria. It's a time, you know, that nobody wants to go back to. Um, this is 2014. Yes. Um, not, well, it's, it's not like, you know, much has changed with regards to the figures of people still dying in the country to terrorist activities. But the uh, tactics, I believe, are different. You know, now we have even, sadly, even more of these groups. There's bandits, there's kidnappers, you know, then, of course, there's the headers. Um, but, you know, 2014 was a time when it was mostly just Boko Haram, you mm -hmm. know, and there was the, you know, huge fears of going to church, huge yes. fears of going to the mosque, going it, to the a market. Week, a week before um, then, there was, a, there was an attack in a church in Bornu State. Um, you know, remember those times when you wake up in the morning and you hear that there was a massive bomb blast, you know, at a you know, telephone market or, you know, any of the markets in the north. Um, and you see the figures of, you know, casualties and it just really, really breaks your heart. Um, we've moved away from those times when there used to be bomb blasts. You know, now, you know, some people might argue that we're now probably even in, in you know, worse times with um, the number of these groups that have now emerged and have, you know, become really, really deadly and dangerous. Um, but, you know, it, it's really just sad memories of, you know, where we are coming from. And we hope that it, you know, continues to get better and, you know, we get to a place where, um, this is all in the past, you know, and Nigerians can walk around freely and go about their businesses, go to the market, go to the church and the mosque uh, without the fear of terrorism or murder Amen. in any way. All right. Um, our next story on Today in History is a story that you very likely wouldn't hear in Nigeria. Also, you very likely wouldn't hear among the black community. Hmm, because that? blacks like life, and we don't like to risk our lives for any reason. And, and are we scared of heights too? Yes, we are scared of heights. You know, people would argue that that's one of the reasons why black people don't invent a lot. You know, don't discover a lot. You know, because yeah, no one's trying to take a risk. You know, and lose their we lives. We love and... our lives, don't we? <laughs> so his name is Nicholas Walenda. Um, he was an uh, he is an American acrobat, aerialist, the daredevil, high wire, uh, wire um, artist, and author. He's also known for his high wire performances without a safety net. So it was on this day, you know, that he became the first person to successfully tightrope walk directly over Niagara Falls. He holds 11 Guinness World Records for various acro acrobatic feats, but was best known as the first person to walk a tightrope stretched uh, stretch directly over Niagara Falls. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Niagara or Niagara uh, Falls. Um, he walked 1,800 feet. Um, on a steel cable over the Masaya volcano in uh, Nicaragua, his longest walk, he crossed uh, Niagara Falls on, July, on June 15, 2012 on a live ABC special following a two-year legal battle involving both sides of the Canada-United States border to gain approval. He was required to weigh, wear a safety harness for the first time in his life. The reality show aired on Science Channel, which followed his, um, his uh, feats. And in 2013, he released a memoir entitled Balance, the feat aired live on Discovery, breaking rating records for um, the channel. He is married, of course, with three kids and considers his Christian faith to be a central aspect of his life. So once again, yes, these are things that you would not see a lot of black people do because we like to remain here on earth <laughs> where we're alive and we're good. Uh, Nigerians also, uh, although there's a lot of Nigerians who are really, really, you know, um, daring, uh, daring, you know, those who still go bungee jumping, who go skydiving sky you know, and some of all of that. Yeah, there's, there's, a, and there's maybe one of the things that I would love to, I, w I will do, you know, mm. uh, skydive at some point. Okay. Um, 
All right, so it's the Niagara Falls. Niagara. Yes, and he, he did great. What did I say? Niagara something. Lord have mercy. Niagara you, Falls. You're good to make an Igbo name or something. <laughs> Niagara. So he crossed from the U.S. to, to Canada. It's, it's crazy how he went through a period of a legal battle to make sure the U.S. and Canada gives him the required approval and permission to be able to make that war. Yeah. Because I'm sure that if he had done that, maybe the state would have had some bits of responsibility if any danger had come to him, maybe family suing or yeah. whatnot. But he gave, you know, was able to get permission and he walked. Just imagine him saying, you know, the view from above was just so breathtaking. Yeah. So it was, it was truly an experience. Thank God he survived. He was even able to write a book about it, titled Balance. And I think I love the title. It just captures everything. Absolutely. And such balance. Absolutely. What a, what a way to live your life. Mm. All right. That's what we have for you. 2012 and 2014. Uh, short break. When we come back, we're moving into our first major conversation for today. It's uh, talking uh, on uh, the grazing routes across the country and the president's um, you know, stance with regards to that and the reaction from southern leaders saying there will be no grazing routes and the ban on open grazing remains. That comes up next after the short break. Stay with us.